artificial intelligence, supercomputers, robots. Now, would you know if I was a robot? Actually, would I know if I was a robot? I'm not. But I want to talk to you about artificial intelligence and, and what it means to us in terms of speaking, how we speak to people, how people speak to us. I have to tell you, I am not a robotics expert, which will become really clear as we go on. I'm a speaker. I've been speaking for a long time, since I was about eight or nine months old, really. And I now teach other people how to speak and how to be effective. So let's first just clear up what artificial intelligence really is. And artificial intelligence is basically when a computer can do things faster, more efficiently, more productivity than we humans can. Sounds good so far. And there are three types of artificial intelligence. So narrow artificial intelligence, now that's with us every day. We're already living with it, even if you don't realize it. And I'm going to come back to that. Then there is what they call general artificial intelligence. And this is when a computer can behave like a human being, can do a million things at once, almost self-aware. Well, this is happening in laboratories. They're trying to create these as we speak. And the general idea among scientists is that they'll be available round about 2040-ish, and you should be able to get them on Amazon Prime home delivery next day by drone. And then you've got super artificial intelligence, and this is the stuff that blockbuster movies are made of. This is when they take over the world. They decide they're better than us, they're smarter than us, and they create chaos. Well, I'm happy to tell you that's not likely to be around during our lifetime, we hope. So let's have a look at narrow artificial intelligence. And this is the stuff we have today. This is from the simplest thing of that little gadget thing above a double door, senses a human, goes, doors open. Human gone, doors close. And we are so used to it, how many of us have walked into a glass door expecting it to open? Right up to self-driving cars. The Mars Rover landing had to be done with artificial intelligence because the signals couldn't get to it in time. We have phones, total artificial intelligence, everything we do. And now we have voice recognition. Now, I do have to admit something that I'm slightly ashamed of. I am the laziest person you'll ever meet. I love AI. I love gadgets. I love the fact that my fridge is so smart, it knows when I've run out of something or it's gone off. It tells the supermarket, little man turns up in a van and back into the fridge it goes. I really can't wait till it can put it in the cooker and cook it for me too. I have a smart washing machine. I no longer shrink anything. It's amazing, chuck it in, there it goes. I have a smart TV. I can sit back and say, Please put a film on that I haven't seen in the last three weeks, and it will find a film and give it to me. In fact, I have realised that I have gone from being the smartest person in my house, and my dog's pretty smart, so I am way down there on the not smarts. It's interesting stuff, though, isn't it? Because we are learning to talk to gadgets. We are learning to make demands of gadgets. Now, from a speaking point of view, that's not a good thing. When you listen to people speak, 
When you're in a room like this, listening to a speaker, we create a symbiotic relationship. You will want me to do well. You do want me to do well. <laughs> and I want to give you information and a message and an idea that will infuse you and inspire you and something you can take away and go, yeah, she's got a point. And something happens during this, this relationship, something you can't measure. You can't code it. You can't replicate it. It creates a vibe, an atmosphere. It's like magic. And it's a different feeling for every single one of you. Because whatever I say will have a different feeling for each and every one of you. And that grows exponentially amongst us all until we're all invested in this amazing atmosphere in a room. Microsoft now have amazing software to create holograms. And they look like you, and they talk like you, in any language you want. And my initial reaction, remembering I'm a really lazy person, was, great, I can stay at home. I'll send my hologram out. I'll make her taller, slightly thinner, maybe a bit younger. And that hologram will never get scared. It will never be vulnerable. It will never forget its words or fall over its own tongue. It will provide you with a perfect rendition of my talk. But you won't care. Because we don't invest in machines. We don't invest emotionally in machines. And this is proved when you go shopping through a self-service till. I'm the one who says thank you. And there's a reason for, well, there's two reasons. One, if they do take over the world, they'll remember I was kind. I was polite. <laughs> but equally, I don't ever want to forget to be polite to another human being. I don't want to get so used to just accepting that somebody says, thank you for shopping with us, that I just walk away. And when a real person says it to me, I just walk away. Because that's what's happening. I bought my mum an Alexa. <laughs> I bought her an Alexa because we needed her to remember to take her pills. She needed to be reminded when to eat, all those sorts of things. And we also bought her like a, a fit watch thing, which was a bit scary because I thought she died one day because she'd dropped it under the bed and it was apparently not making any. <laughs> and my mum loves it. It reminds her of all those things. She asks it jokes, tells her jokes, does all this sort of thing. But if my mum never had a conversation with a human being, she might be physically fit, she might be well fed, but she will die of loneliness. The kids in school today can be assessed by different computers so you have different levels of educational attainment in the same room, which is great, except they don't know how to socialise and have a conversation with each other. I discovered I could only have a conversation with my grandson if I happened to be on some sort of game dressed as some sort of weird warrior queen. He was very embarrassed when I told him who I was. <laughs> the thing is, we do love our gadgets, but we need to speak to each other. How often have you been to a restaurant? Now, Back in the day before of all this, you knew there was an atmosphere in a restaurant. There was a hubbub of conversation. There was things going on. Now you go into a restaurant, everybody's on the phone. Next time you do that, just stand up and shout, Hey Siri, what's the weather like? <laughs> I'm glad you've got them all turned off. Because that's how we expect things to happen.
So I asked you this question, am I a robot? Well, in 1950, Alan Turing came up with a test. Bit scary, I can't even pass a spelling test. But Alan Turing said, the only way you can tell if a computer is as clever as a human is if it can speak like a human. So they put up these tests, blind tests. So there'd be a man in a room and he would text or whatever the equivalent was in 1950. There'd be a few people in a room and a computer. And if the person doing the test couldn't tell who was the computer, well, then he passed. And this has been going on now, so there's lots of these Turing tests. There's even competitions every year to try and beat the test. But coders have got very clever. They've started cheating. They even coded one computer to, uh, to actually act like a schizophrenic. And so nobody could tell. But have a think about how that might affect us in the next 50 years or so, if we forget to have conversations with people. Could it be actually that eventually the computers will pass the Turing test? We won't, because we won't know how to have a conversation. We will only know how to say, what's the weather like? Can you answer that question? I mean, my Alexa and I, great friends. She's sort of like our marriage guidance counsellor at home. We have a row, we ask Alexa. <laughs> Sat and have an eye, oh no, we're getting divorced. I mean, having anything to do with my sat-nav ever again. But I would like you to think about when you go home. Gadgets are really useful, really useful. They save us time. And for us self-appointed, really, really lazy people, they're wonderful. But never, ever forget that if we don't have human communication, if we don't have conversations, if we don't have discussions, if we don't even have heavy debates and arguments, we are never going to grow and learn as people. We will become as bad as the gadgets we use. So I want you to all go home and over this weekend, have a conversation with somebody.